Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel to another new video. Uh, in this video, we'll just look at this platform called Orchestra. So this is an open source data orchestration and scheduling platform which helps us to create, scale, monitor uh, complex pipelines like the data pipelines. So we'll just look into that. And before that, we'll just try to understand what is data orchestration as well. Uh, maybe most of you might not aware of that. So we'll just get into a quick intro of data orchestration. And then we can just look at this platform called Kestra and also I'll just give you a demo of how you can create a workflows, how you can scale, like how you can monitor that, how you can schedule that. I'll just, we'll just look into that as well. So yeah, make sure to watch the video till the end and also don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I create content around data science and machine learning and also planning to start a data science bootcamp as well, which will help you all. So yeah, cool. With that, let's get started. We'll just try to understand and what is data orchestration. So before understanding data orchestration, it's good to get an idea of what is a data pipeline, right? It's so what is a pipeline? Pipeline is something which helps us to take something from one place to another, right? Whatever it may be. So data pipeline in the sense, moving the data, moving the data from one place to another. It can be from database to data workflows, or let's say moving from one database to another database, whatever it can be. Moving the data from, that's called as data pipeline. I've just drawn these blocks. So consider this as a data pipeline. Uh, just consider this as a database. From the database, we are just extracting the data. Um, probably maybe we just consider that we are just extracting in the form of CSV. Uh, whatever it may be, we are just extracting the data. Once we extract that CSV file, uh, in this second task or maybe in the block 2, we are just reading that CSV, right? Reading that CSV. So that's second one. So that's the task 2. And after reading that, we are just doing some transformation, right? Can be cleaning the data or let's say doing some, adding some features or let's say removing some features. Whatever it may be, just doing some transformation here of that CSV file. Right, we are just doing some transformation. Right? What we just done from the database, we have just extracted the data in the form of a CSV file. We have just read the data. In we have just read that CSV file, and then we have just performed some transformation. After that, again we are just loading that transformed data to another database. Right? Load. We are just loading that to another database. So just consider this as a simple pipeline. Just right, we just have a database and just getting the data from there. We are just doing some transformation and loading that data to another database, or it can be to another file, or, or this data can be used for data analysis. So, just consider this as a simple pipeline. You can just see a data pipeline is moving the data from one place to another, or it can be defined as it's a series of data processing steps. So, that's what, right? We are just moving the data from the database to another database. So that's the data pipeline. So that's cool. I hope you get an idea of what is data pipeline. Now, what is data orchestration? Why we just required that? So for that, I would like to ask three questions, right? I would like to ask three questions. Number one is what if the data is huge? What if the data is huge, right? What if the data is huge? And if you are getting the data, if you are getting the data, collecting the data from different data sources, it's a tedious task, right? It's not easy to manage, manage right? So that's one drawback. Like when your data is huge, or let's say when you are collecting the data from different data sources, when you just want to track all those things, it's difficult to do that, right? So that's one problem. And the second question is, and the second one I would like to ask is, what if you got an unexpected problem? For example, let's say in this entire pipeline, somewhere, uh, somewhere there's there's a problem like you can't able to either you can't able to load the data or it can be some kind of issue. How you can just track that? Since this pipeline is simple, it looks simple. That's cool. But you know that won't be the case, right? You'll be having you'll having a num you'll be having a number of data pipelines and as I just mentioned, collecting data from different sources. All these things. So what if you get a problem somewhere? It's difficult to track that. It's difficult to resolve that, right? 
it takes some time so would like, and the right. third question i would like to ask is what if you want to schedule right what if you want to schedule this pipeline running of this pipeline every day right you just want to run the pipeline at a specific date and a specific time what you what like if you you, you just want to schedule that what you, how how you can just do that right it's also a difficult task so, that, so these are the few drawbacks so that's why that's why in order to solve these problems we have this data orchestration tools now right. i hope you got an idea of what is data orchestration so data orchestration is automating scheduling these complex data pipelines so that's that's data pipeline that's data orchestration hope you get an idea so as i just so as i just mentioned there are a lot of open source tools in order to do the data orchestration a lot of open source tools available in this video we'll just look especially into this open source tool called kestra and we'll just try to create that workflows we'll just schedule that we'll just try to monitor that so i will show you how easy it is to do that so yeah make sure to watch the till make sure to watch the video till the end so here is a github repo of the kestra i will just give the link in the description so make sure to check that and make sure to start that repo as well like uh, support the support the project just try to uh, support that and also there are a lot of open issues so you can just try to uh, contribute to the project as well if you just want so yeah that's it uh, make sure to check the links in the description as well so yeah you can just see uh, kestra it's an infinitely scalable open source orchestration and scheduling platform now you have got an idea of what i'm just talking about like the orchestration and scheduling what all all what all this now probably you will get an idea right like let's try to understand what are some key features uh, present in kestra so number one is you can just create any kind of workflow so the previously which i just shown you it's a simple workflow uh, like extracting the data from a database doing some transformation and loading that but in a real world that won't be the scenario uh, right. you can just create like you can just create even like the complex pipelines right. and the second thing is easy to learn so obviously obviously if it, if you if i just want to use a data orchestration platform it should be easy to use right even the building blocks or let's say defining the workflows defining the tasks all these things should be easy to easy to understand it's so simple that, like you can just define all the things in an ml file uh, like what are the tasks you are just defining all the things all the all the flows all the workflows you can just define that in a yml yml files okay. that's also a key feature in kestra and we'll just look into that like in, in a couple of minutes we'll just see how you can create that workflow how we can just define that ml file how you just define the task all the thing we'll just look into that in a couple of minutes so yeah that's also a feature like easy to learn and easy to extend like 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 so it also supports a lot of plugins for different platforms for example let's say you just want to get the data from a snowflake db like the data uh, data warehouse so there's a there's so there's a plugin available so you can use that plugin and you can just extract that and similarly there are a lot of plugins also uh for different kind of tasks for different kind of processes yeah, even if you just required you can just create your own plugin for your own use case so that's also been that's also you can just do uh i'm just, i'm just limiting that here i'm just i'm just stopping it here like you can just go through the documentation how you can just create the plugins different kind of plugins etc so yeah and also the important thing is as i just mentioned previously right you should able to monitor the workflows you should able to track all the things so for that a good user interface is also important so it has that web ui where you can just try to uh, look at this all these things like the monitor running creating all these things it makes easy to do it from the ui we'll just probably look into that as well so yes. those are some important features to now yes. i will just walk you through how you can create a workflow as i just mentioned previously like how you can just create a workflow like uh, monitoring scheduling all the things how you can just do that we'll just look into that now so for that uh, if you are just you can just follow the documentation here uh, just try to have docker in your machine in your pc once you have that just try to download the if you are a window user just try to download the compose like the docker file and try to follow this like just, just try to run it. So I have already done that. Then just try to open the local host. Just try to open this. 
So yeah, you can just see this is how the UI looks like when you just follow all the things. Now we just try to look at this UI. We just try to see what are all the things present here and how you can just create that workflows, how you can just do the things. We just look into that. So first of all, here you can just see the flows. It means so here we will just define the a workflow like it's just a collection of tasks it's so you can just define some list of tasks and here you can see i've just already created a flow like io.kestra.test if you are creating like if you are new like you can just create a new if you just want to create a new flow or just at the bottom right you can just see i just try to create and i'm just copying the yaml file to define the flow from the documentation so this is a basic workflow so once we just did that, just try to copy that, just try to paste that and here you can see in the namespace, you can just define whatever the name uh, you just want to give that to the flow to, so let's try to give it as test1 and just try to save it yeah, once you just done that now you can see, like I've just defined the task right in the flow, like the task id, task1, task2, task3 so this is just a simple flow, like I haven't done any complex transformations to the data i have and extracting data so this is just a demo it just it's just for a demo so you can see i've just defined this and you can just go to the topology here to look at how this flow looks like so the task one task two and the task three right you can just see the topology and in order to execute it like once you if you want to execute the flow you can just go through you can just go to here and just click execute And once you just done that, and you'll just get the details of your flow, like the date you just created, duration, the number of steps. Like so that's how you can just create a flow. That's how simple it is. So and also, there are a few other things as well. Uh, like you can use the source schedule, like what I just what we just discussed previously, right? Even that's the that's the advantage of having data orchestration tools, like to schedule whenever you just required. You can just add a new schedule here and you can just define the time you can see you can just define the time when you just want to schedule the flow and also you can just see the logs for your flow so that's so that's all the things right so that's how easy it is to create a flow and also to monitor all the uh, also to monitor complex pipelines and to schedule that to all the things right to automate all the things and also here we just have the templates so you can just create a new template so can templates in the cells so if you just want to use a task in different workflows, so you can just create a template with a set of tasks and in whichever flow you just want to use it, like whichever workflow you just want to use, you can just directly import uh, from the template. So that's how you can just create. And yeah, like that's how simple it is to do. And executions, logs, documentation, you can just check that. Like as I just mentioned, there are a lot of plugins available. You can just go through that. So yeah, that's how simple it is to create a flow, like to create a workflow, to monitor that, to schedule that in a Kestra. This is just a demo, uh, probably in the future I'll just create a detailed video on how you can just work more on Kestra, we'll just work on some real world examples as well. So yeah, that's all for this video. I hope you get an understanding, an idea of what is data orchestration and how you can use this how you can leverage this uh, open source tool called Kestra to to all to do all the things right like the monitoring, automating the things, scheduling, all the things right. Also, I hope you get an idea of what are the features that Kestra provides, uh, like the plugins, UI, all the things right. Like, hope you get an idea of that. So yeah, that's all for this video. Uh, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching this video. I will see you in the next video. Until then, take care. Have a great day.